Hello, I'm Bill Buesenberg. I'm the executive director of the Pulitzer Prize winning Center for Public Integrity. <laughs> yeah, I like saying that. Anyway, uh, welcome to everybody to this silver uh, symposium. Our subject tonight is truth. I want to thank C-SPAN for filming this and broadcasting it later. And I especially want to thank the many distinguished journalists who are here tonight, uh, along with concerned citizens, along with colleagues, uh, book lovers, donors, potential donors, family members of potential donors. Uh, we're here to talk about Charles Lewis, the founder of the Center for Public Integrity 25 years ago, and Chuck's great new book, which uh, I think everyone has seen. You can buy a copy in the back, 935 Lives, the Future of Truth and the Decline of American, America's Moral Integrity. Uh, imagine for a moment, if you will, if Chuck had not quit 60 Minutes 25 years ago in 1989, and if he had not started the Center for Public Integrity. So imagine there is no Center for Public Integrity these last 25 years. Then a night in the Lincoln bedroom uh, in the White House might still be for sale to the high-rolling presidential donors. <laughs> Officials of the FCC and other agencies might still be taking thousands of trips paid for by the media companies and the companies they regulate. Then members of Congress might still be taking millions of dollars from lobbyists for their own all-expense-paid trips to really nice locations to play golf. If there had been no Center for Public Integrity, then the potent issue of campus assault might not be as high on the national agenda. Halliburton might still be getting the lion's share of the Pentagon's no-bid contracts. Global cigarette smuggling might, in fact, be fueling even more terrorism around the world. If Chuck had not started the Center for Public Integrity, there would be no International Consortium of Investigative Journalists. That's ICIJ, a project of the Center. ICIJ is a reporting team of 185 journalists in 65 countries doing cross-border investigations. They're the ones who put global tax havens on the international agenda. If there were no ICIJ, there would be no quotas for fishing in the Southern Pacific Ocean. There would be uh, the, the bluefin quotas in the Atlantic Ocean would be easily circumvented as they had been by the looting the sea fishing industry for so long until we reported on it. There would be no 600 alumni of the Center for Public Integrity, those who have spread the center's brand of really high quality, no stone unturned investigative journalism around the world. And finally, had there been no Center for Public Integrity, there would be no accounting carefully of the 935 times that the top eight officials of the George W. Bush administration said that one, Iraq had indeed weapons of mass destruction, or two, that Iraq was linked directly with Al Qaeda. We know both of those statements were not true. But they were repeated 935 times leading up to the Iraq invasion in 2003. 935 Lives, that's the, the name of the book, which Chuck will talk to you about and read from in just a moment. But in short, without Chuck Lewis leaving 60 Minutes and starting the Center for Public Integrity, there would be no dedicated watchdog in the corridors of power like the Center. And all those bad things I talked about might not have been stopped, and the good things might not have, been, might not have happened. I have a, a favorite quote uh, from Chuck's book. This is really a description that he gives when he talks about what his thinking was when he created the Center for Public Integrity. My dream was a kind of journalistic utopia, he wrote. A journalistic utopia. An investigative milieu in which no one would tell me who or what not to investigate, and in which the final story would be unfettered by time and space limitations and untrammeled by the power of corporate or government interests bent on burying the truth. Here to tell you more firsthand, one of the alumni of the center is uh, Bill Allison. And I'm gonna have Bill come up here in just a second. He's the editorial director of the Sunlight Foundation, an investigative journalist in his own right. He worked at the center for nine years. Uh, he's co-authored The Cheating of America, along with Chuck, and was a key editor in the great series of books, The Buying of the President. Bill is also an expert on dark money in politics. So 
Bill Allison. Thank you, Bill. Um, huh, it's, you know, it's, um, thinking about the center, it's, it's hard to realize that 20 years ago, and I thought I would begin when I first discovered the center, that 20 years ago the internet was in its infancy, that we thought of news organizations as being newspapers or radio stations or TV or uh, magazines, and uh, that you know, a nonprofit dedicated to doing just investigative journalism was something that was you know, uh, a very strange idea in 1994. And I can remember how strange I thought it was. I was working for the Philadelphia Inquirer, and I first discovered the Center for Public Integrity at the Stacks of the Annenberg uh, Library at the University of Pennsylvania. And there was a study called America's Frontline Trade Officials by Charles Lewis and the Center for Public Integrity uh, about a subject that I was looking into at the time revolving door among US trade officials while I was working for a pair of investigative journalists at the Philadelphia Inquirer. And I thought, you know, what is this and who are these guys? Um, but it was amazing. It was a report that, um, you know, no limitations of time or space, went through 74 current and former, uh, at the time, U.S. trade officials. It found that 47% of the former ones had gone on to lobby for foreign countries, basically our top trade negotiators representing the other side in trade negotiations uh, and trade treaties. And it had a huge impact. I mean, this was somewhat revolutionary, this report that came out. There was a GAO investigation, there was a congressional hearing, of course this was all before I had uh, discovered the uh, report or even knew about it. Uh, it became a campaign issue in 1992, uh, overseas trade and, uh, and these trade officials, and Bill Clinton issued an executive order in his, I think, uh, in his very first days in office banning his trade officials from lobbying for foreign interests. So this you know, effort had a huge impact, and it wasn't the only center report that I, and I started bumping into lots of them. Uh, amazingly, there were things about, um, you know, the Chuck's name and the center's name would keep turning up, uh, ethics stories about um, uh, big corporate uh, donors traveling with cabinet secretaries, um, political party chairmen who were also lobbying, uh, there would be FBI investigations after the center's work. I mean, it was, stuff was really having an impact, but they were knocking out one great story after another. And I kept thinking, you know, who are these guys? And from the outside, looking in from, the, from my perch of the Philadelphia Inquirer, it seemed like this incredibly professional, slick organization. And of course, later I would discover, <laughs> when I went to work there, that a lot of these uh, stories were fueled by, you know, desperate all-nighters, dashes to the finish line, breathlessly getting to the press conference, barely in time, uh, uh, releasing the findings, then coming back for a pizza party in the old office, and you know, and endless media calls, and not being able to actually eat the pizza because there were so many reporters calling about the findings. So, uh, but anyway, but that was, that was later. Um, uh, I first saw Chuck when he was giving a, it was uh, here at the National Press Club, I saw him on TV, and he was giving a press conference about his first book, uh, The Buying of the President, uh, which came out in 1996. And was this, uh, before, because I worked at the Inquirer and because the New York Times actually syndicated the book, I got to read the excerpts over the wires. Uh, and it was just amazing. I mean, here was a book that looked at, I'd never seen anything like this before, that looked at the big donors, two presidential candidates, their relationships with, uh, those politicians, what the politicians had done for them in return. I mean, just documented, it was just incredible. And, uh, you know, simply put, and in a word that always makes me think of Chuck in the center, it was just unprecedented. It was just an amazing effort. Um, um, I'm going to skip ahead. Uh, at, the, at that uh, buying, the press con uh, buying the President press conference, I mean, one of the things that I really loved about Chuck was he asserted at one point, that the Clinton administration was the most ethically challenged. I think he used a word that started with C, but I'm going to—I uh, wasn't able to find the tape, so I'm going to say ethically challenged, and that he had seen in Washington up to that point. And a reporter in the question and answer session challenged him on that point, and Chuck started rattling off the number of independent counsel investigations, the number of inve inspector general uh, investigations, the number of. Uh, congressional investigations, just chapter and verse. I mean, this was an assertion. This wasn't an opinion. This isn't what, you know, you see on, you know, so many people who, uh, 